Welcome to our lecture online. So here is a set of constants that you would be well advised to try to memorize at least most of these when you're taking the JE main or the JE advanced test because often they don't give you the constant. They expect you to know it, especially when it comes to the JE advanced tests. Now, it's really not a bad idea to memorize these regardless what tests you're going to take because if you have to go look it up or if you have to go reference the problem to find the value, instead of having it right here, you could just write it down. It just makes the flow of exercising or completing the problem a lot easier. So these are always a benefit if you can find the time to, mem to memorize these specific constants. So let's go through them. First of all, you have the speed of light rounded to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. The charge on a single electron, 1.602 times 10 to, this 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Of course, we know it's a negative charge, but that's the magnitude of the charge. We could also apply this number to the charge of a proton. Here we have the universal gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meter squared per kilogram squared, unless you put it in vector format, then it would be meters cubed. But in simple uh, magnitude, it's correct. The acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second square. Most of the time, we can simply round it off to 10. We have Planck's constant, which is 6.626, ooh, I forgot something here, times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. <laughs> uh, that's a lot better. Otherwise, that would be quite a Planck's constant, wouldn't it? All right, the gas constant, 8.315 joules per mole per Kelvin. And then if we convert that to the Boltzmann constant, we take the Gans constant divided by Avogadro's number, we get 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. Notice there's no mole in there because this is per mole, this is per atom or molecule. Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 per mole. We have the mass of an electron, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. The mass of a proton, which is approximately equal to the mass of a neutron, at 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And then a single atomic mass unit at 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Continuing up here, two very important ones is the permeability of free space at 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton meter squared and the permittivity of free space, 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 Weber per amp per meter. Then, sometimes in equations they write, instead of writing 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, they write K, and that would equal 9 times 10 to 9 newton meter squared per coulomb squared, and we use this equation a lot in Coulomb's law. One atmosphere is 101,325 pascals, 0 degrees centigrade or 0 degrees Celsius equates to 273 Kelvin or to be more precise 273.15 Kelvin. The volume of one mole of gas is 22.4 liters at STP conditions. Bohr's atom, so the, or Bohr radius I should say, the distance from the electron to the proton in a hydrogen atom is 0 0.529 angstroms or 52.9 nanometers. Then we have the Stefan Boltzmann constant, what we use in radiation. We have 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 joules per meter squared per Kelvin to the fourth power. Turns out I like this one because notice the numbers 5, 6, 7, 8. That's one of the easiest ones to memorize. One electron volt equivalent to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And the energy equivalent of one atomic mass unit is 931.5 million electron volts. It's also not a bad idea to memorize the mass of the Earth, which is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. You can round it off to 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The rays of the Earth is, is an average of 6,378 kilometers. The mass of the Sun, 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And the mass of the Moon is 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd uh, 20 kilograms. So if you've got these memorized, and after a while, especially when you use them a lot, it wouldn't be that hard to memorize them. It is a really big advantage not to have to go look them up when you're practicing or trying to figure out what it is during the test. It just comes right out. It makes a lot of sense to have them memorized, even if in some tests they give you some of the constants. It's always a good idea to just have them memorized. You can just write them straight down and you know what they are, including the units to go along with them. And that is how you prepare for one of those tests. 
wants to add to this? Yes, you're right. This is not a complete list by any means. There's more constants, but if you got these constants memorized, you probably are ready for at least 90, 95% of all the problems you're going to encounter. There's obviously some additional ones. I didn't put any of the optics constants in there, but again, I think this is a pretty good set that will get you through just about anything. <laughs> if viewers write in and say, hey, what about this one and that one, we'll redo this and we'll add some more to the list. <laughs> <Too late. laughs>